say, don't be afraid of the dark. Our guest tonight is Stacey, who's undergoing a sex change. Stacey, you used to be a man called Tom, and you've got a three-year-old daughter called Emma. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. Now, you're not actually um, a girl yet, although can I say something to make it clear, because people can't see you, that you are actually a very pretty, attractive woman, aren't you now? Well, I'm glad Are you, you pleased said that. With well, I'm sort of getting there. I feel I'm, I really am reaching that stage now. But I want people to know that, because actually my arms are hairier than yours and that kind of thing. True. <laughs> <laughs> when, why, why then? What made you suddenly decide that you're going to do the most radical thing that you can possibly do to your body? I well, mind. It's not a sudden decision that you make overnight in the sense of, you know, I've got to change tomorrow from being a guy to a girl. It's something that was there for the last 30 years of my life. So you went through the first 30 years of your life, you were a man and you did all the, the normal manly, manly things. things like... Well, most of the time. I mean, so I had a lot. I was, when I was 17, 18, 19, those years, I was very much transvestite and living very much in a gay environment because it was safe for me or I felt safe. Were you actively gay then? No, not actively gay. I mean, I, it's difficult to explain, but when you're in a guy's body, I found it very difficult to make it with another guy. But now I'm starting to develop a woman's body, I find it really interesting, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so, one of your main reasons then was that you actually fancied men, but you wanted to have a woman's body. Yeah. yeah. And also my, my own mental stability, a lot of my actions, I felt very uncomfortable as a guy because they were very effeminate. People say, you know, well, I think as a man or I think as a woman, is there really a difference? Totally. I mean, there are times when I thought to myself, or people would say to me, hey, you know what I'm thinking, or another guy would say, you know what, if it, you know, I'm thinking, I said, don't, because I don't think like you. I think like Stacey does, which I suppose is, I think, like a woman. What uh, did you, family and your wife think about this? My wife knew about me when we first went out with each other, and she was quite tolerant of it, but as the relationship went on and the marriage, because I, I got married to her... But, um, you did really fancy when you got married, did you? No, I liked her as a person. Did, did, she, know really the, did she know you didn't really fancy her? No. Oh. <laughs> Not then, I think she did by the time we finished. Because she tolerated it first, and then as it went on, it was more a case of providing you get better, and I'll help you to get better because you're obviously ill. Um, I'll stay with you. That was the attitude. There wasn't a sort of other side to it. And while you were married, did you, you know, go out dressed as a woman? And yeah. Like that? And at the last, at the end of the marriage, I was dressing as a woman all the time, which and was getting very difficult for her and the child. And did you have any gay relationships while you were married? No, but I had a few close encounters. <laughs> What about sex with your wife? I mean, could you really get turned on? Or did you just, you know, pretend all the time? No, I didn't ever get a full, re full erection. Um, I don't think I ever have. I mean, the thing never worked in the first place. Yeah. It's <laughs> one of the problems. <laughs> and well, it must have been, because you've got a child. Well, that's debatable, really. I mean, it, yeah, I'd, there's a lot of controversy actually surrounding them. And the thing was that... Um, she wasn't actually my child. I didn't oh. actually father her. Oh, I see. Um, but I got put into the position of fathering her because of the embarrassment caused to her family. So your wife had an affair then? Mm-hmm. It's all racist stuff at your isn't it? Well, yeah, there were other sides to it, like, you know, with divorce and maintenance and all that situation occurring. I didn't see why I should have to pay. <laughs> so is your wife completely shattered now? No, not at all. She, she, she took the house and ran off into bliss, I think. <laughs> Do you not feel like you've been cruel to anybody? No, I don't think I've been. I don't think I've misled anybody. I feel very sad that I that I misled myself, and therefore obviously did mislead people. But I didn't mean to. If you see what I mean, because there are two people inside you, and the, the real person has now come through. How do you think it's going to affect Emma in later years? A to maybe find out that you weren't her father in the first place, and B that you're now going to be a woman. Well, by the time she finds out, I will, I will fully be a woman, or as close as I can ever become a woman. Will you still be a parent to her in any way? Will I don't know. I haven't seen Emma now since, well, for about the last 18 months. The last time I saw her was uh, last August, and she just learned to walk. Before we talk about the physical things you're going to have to go through, does it worry you now that you're not ever going to be able to be a parent again once you've gone through the full operation? Um, who says I'm not going to adopt? Who says... No, well, you're not going to have a blood, blood child or blood re relative. No, no, that doesn't worry me. As a woman, as you'll be a woman, will you ever be worried that you won't be able to experience pregnancy? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, to a lot of degrees, because I really would like to go through all of that. But 
No, because I think it's quite painful and I've had enough pain. We'll find out more about the pain and all the medical treatment in a minute after the record. Johnny Thunders and Patty Paladin, and we're now talking to Stacey, who's about to undergo in a couple of weeks' time a sex change operation. But Stacey, how have they been preparing you for that? Because that's not the first step, is it? No, it's actually quite a long passage. First of all, you have to live as a woman and work as a woman for one year before you have the operation. So you wear women's clothes and all the rest of it? Yeah, I never forget the day. It was a Sunday. I just took, went into the wardrobe and took every piece of male clothing out and threw it in the bin. Is that no, there was no going back. I couldn't really go and rescue it for a while. Is that to test you to make sure you're psychologically ready? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you do go through an awful lot of psychological... Um, well, there's a lot of hurdles you've got to climb. So, that. were you working at the time? Was that a full-time job then? Yeah, I was working for one of the London agencies in promotions and advertising, which is what I do. So, so you just thing. walked in one the f Monday morning as a, a woman? No, it wasn't quite like that. I actually sat down with the MD and told him a few weeks before I changed over, and then I had to go for one of my operations on my nose. Um, and then when I returned to work, I went through about six weeks of sheer purgatory, when just about everybody that I knew in the agency turned against me. So you really suffered psychologically? Yeah, in a lot of ways I have. Have you had any counselling for that? Some counselling from the consultant, one of the consultant psychiatrists at Charing Cross, which is the main gender, which is the only gender place in the UK. What do people who are called so-called experts in this field, what kind of advice do they give you, what do they say to you? Well, they don't really, they just guide you. You tell them how you feel and they guide you into understanding whether it's, it's really your true feelings or whether it's made up. What are the cruelest things that people have said to you? Because I know somebody who worked for a television company and one day one of his colleagues just walked in uh, dressed as a woman, you know, as the first stage huh? of his change, and they were horrible to him. What's the cruelest thing that's happened to you? One particular person who should stay, stay nameless called me an animal. To your face? To my face in front of an awful lot of people. So did you uh, at any time, you know, just think, I can't cope with this and lock yourself in your flat? Yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Often it took a lot of courage at first to actually walk out in the street and, because I knew that within 500 yards someone had twigged because you, you, you don't hold yourself. Your deportment is wrong, you know, your back doesn't work. And you've you got hairy legs, legs like jelly and you'd look like a guy dressed in girls' clothes. And you don't actually realise that when you're trans -vest -like. You know, you, you can go out for a couple of hours, but when you're doing it every day and you wake up and you go to bed and each day, you, you, you know, you're getting closer, the hair slowly goes. The figure slowly changes with hormones. So you start off by so dressing... it gets better every day. You start off by dressing in women's clothes and trying to have the appearance of a woman. Yeah. Then, then you start then hormone treatment. Then you start treatment. hormone treatment. They, they put you on Provera, which helps breast growth. There is a side so effect. I, can I just ask you, those, sure. those they're boobs all that are mine. they're not silicone implants or no, anything? No, they are totally grown. They're, well, they're bigger they're, than mine. <laughs> they've grown to 36B in six months, which is quite incredible. So, and I can't see any facial hair at all. There's a little bit, but it's hidden. <laughs> no, it's, that's been three hours a week for the last six months of electrolysis, which is the most painful thing I've ever been through in my life. You, you don't have to shave every day? Do I don't shave. I haven't shaved for six, seven months now. And you, you're obviously wearing makeup. Does that cover it a bit as well? Well, it covers the scars that are there now, which still leave the lines, the outline of the beard, but they'll go for the next six months. So and I'll never wear makeup, great. Were you a hairy block, I mean, did you have hair on your shoulders and your chest? No, I was actually 60% based female hormone when they did the test. So, um, I was very lucky that I wasn't that hairy. But yeah, I was a lot hairier than I am now. So you've got all the outward signs now of being a girl. I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, you've still got one major hurdle to overcome, haven't you? Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, God, now, most of the men that I know are so, you know, proud of the willies or penises or whatever you want to call them. They're <laughs> so protective about them. How can you have it chopped off? Because if I don't, then I, how, how can I fully experience what I want to experience and my right to experience, which is the other side of the ecstasy coin? I can understand your excitement, but aren't you going to miss it? Oh, you've lived well, with it for 30 years. It's, it's well, like having an arm chopped off. Often. Not really. I mean, it would be like having your small finger chopped off to comparison to an arm. <laughs> um, what does the operation entail exactly? It doesn't sound too good, and I'll let you know when I come through it exactly what it was like, but... You know, you basically have to lie very, very still, and I believe they strap me to the bed for the five days. Why do they? Why strap me? And they shut down your bowels, and you're not allowed to eat. Why are your bowels? Because of complications in allowing that you've had major abdominal surgery, and you've got to allow it to really settle down. What do they give you? Sort of <laughs> tuck the skin in and give you some sort of pouch as a vagina? Well, yeah, I mean, they, they literally, they take the foreskin, they cut the centre out, it's a bit like peeling a banana, and then they 
put it inwards rather than have it outwards. And they redirect your urethra and everything. Yeah, so and you have to learn to all about. You have to learn to have a wee wee all over again. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think I do it pretty much like everybody else. I mean, I haven't stood up to do a wee for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, will you have a, a clitoris or anything? Yeah. And you'll be able to have an orgasm? Yeah. The only thing I won't have to have the ovaries in the womb. Will you be able to feel anything in this pouch? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> she said we'd I think we'll have another record, so. Good idea. <laughs>